Chapter 12 of ICD-10-CM is for diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. This presentation will cover the official ICD-10 guidelines specific to this chapter. There will also be clinical scenarios to practice coding what you just learned, followed by a small quiz at the end of the presentation. For each coding example, you will need to pause the webinar and use your ICD-10-CM coding manual to code the scenario. Once you resume the webinar, we will go over the correct codes, the rationale behind them, as well as how to locate them in the ICD-10 manual. Keep in mind that there may be more than one way to find a code. We are aware that there is a great deal of information contained in this presentation. Therefore, at any time during the webinar, please feel free to pause and replay as needed. It is important that you have already completed the Introduction to ICD-10 CM webinar as you will use the conventions and general guidelines discussed in the introduction to complete the coding scenarios. As you can see on this slide, the codes for this chapter start with the letter L. If you remember from ICD-9, the skin codes all started with the numbers 6 and 7. However, there are many more skin codes in ICD-10 due to the addition of combination codes for conditions such as ulcers, which combine the site of the ulcer with the stage. In ICD-10, both decubitus and non-decubitus ulcers require a sixth character, which indicates the depth of the ulcer, while the fifth character indicates the site, such as the hip or the heel. If gangrene is present, it is reported with code I-96 and is reported before the ulcer code or codes. Decubitus ulcers include bed sores, plaster ulcers, pressure ulcers, and pressure sores. Conversely, if the following conditions are documented, they code to non-decubitus ulcers. Chronic skin ulcers, non-healing ulcers, non-infected sinus of skin, trophic ulcer, tropical ulcer, or just plain ulcer. Remember that both the site and depth of the ulcer, as well as the type, are all needed in order for the correct code to be selected. In addition to the site and depth of the ulcer being included in the ulcer codes, laterality is another new concept of ICD-10. Therefore, we can now indicate whether the ulcer was on the right or left side of the body. The stages of pressure ulcers are based on severity, with stage 1 being the least severe and stage 4 being the most severe. Stage 1 is represented by a sixth character of 1, stage 2 is a sixth character of 2, and so on up to 4. If the stage of the ulcer is not documented, a sixth character of 9 is used to indicate unspecified stage. A sixth character of 0 indicates that the ulcer is unstageable, this is only to be used if documentation states that the stage of the ulcer cannot be clinically determined. If documentation states that a pressure ulcer is completely healed, the ulcer would not be coded. If the patient is admitted with a stage 1 pressure ulcer of the left buttock and the ulcer progresses to a stage 2 during the hospital stay, the ulcer is reported as stage 2 you code for the highest stage reported for that site. Also, if a patient has a stage two ulcer on the left buttock and a stage one ulcer on the right buttock, you're going to report two codes, one for each side. The guidelines for ICD-10 state that it is acceptable for a nurse to document the stage of the ulcer. However, the actual diagnosis of pressure ulcer must be documented by the physician, APRN, APRN, or PA. Now I'd like to try some examples. Patient has gangrenous pressure ulcer of the right hip with cellulitis and a pressure ulcer of the sacrum documented by the physician. The nursing assessment indicates a stage two presser, pressure ulcer of the sacrum with a stage three decubitus ulcer of the right hip. So how would you code this? Please pause the webinar to complete this example and then hit play to continue and learn the answer. The first code is I-96, gangrene not elsewhere classified. Remember that the guidelines state that if gangrene is documented, 
that this must be coded first. To locate this code, start at ulcer in the alphabetic index and then locate gangrenous. There is a note which states C gangrene. The code next to gangrene is I-96, which you would then confirm in the tabular. The next code is L89.213, pressure ulcer of right hip, stage 3. To locate this code, start at ulcer in the alphabetic index, then find pressure indented below. From there, find stage 3, and then the site, which is the hip. This points to L89.2, with a checkbox next to it indicating more digits are required. When we go to the tabular, we see that subcategory L89.2 is for pressure ulcer of the hip. So we still need to find the right hip as well as stage three. The subcategory for right hip is L89.21, and then we need a sixth character of three as the ulcer is stage three. This gives us a final code of L89.213. The next code is L89.152, pressure ulcer of sacral region, stage two. To locate this code, start at ulcer in the alphabetic index, then find pressure indented below. From there, find stage two, and then the site, which is the sacral region. This points to L89.15, with a checkbox next to it indicating more digits are required. When we go to the tabular, we see that subcategory L89.15 is for pressure ulcer of sacral region. Then we need a six character of two as the ulcer is stage two. This gives us a final code of L89.152. The final code is L03.115 cellulitis of right lower limb. To locate this code, start at cellulitis in the alphabetic index then find hip indented below, as documentation states that the patient had a pressure ulcer of the right hip with cellulitis. There is a note next to hip stating C cellulitis lower limb. After finding lower limb, we are directed to code L03.11 with a checkbox next to it indicating more digits are required. When we go to the tabular, we see that subcategory L03.11 is for cellulitis of other parts of limb. So we still need to find the right lower limb, which is L03.115. The order for the codes in this scenario is important. The guidelines state that gangrene must be coded first if it's present. Then the remainder of the codes should be sequenced from most to least severe. Therefore, the stage three ulcer would be sequenced before the stage two ulcer. Cellulitis is the least severe, which is why it goes last. Let's do another example. Patient developed dermatitis covering their entire body this morning, and the provider determined it was due to antibiotics, specifically penicillin, taken correctly as prescribed. How would you code this? Please pause the webinar to complete this example and then hit play to continue and learn the answer. The first code is L27.0, generalized skin eruption due to drugs and medicaments taken internally. To locate this code, start at dermatitis in the alphabetic index, then locate the phrase due to. From there, look for drugs and medicaments with generalized and internal use in parentheses, which points to L27.0, which you would then confirm in the tabular. There is an instructional note in the tabular which states, use additional code for adverse effect, if applicable, to identify drug, which is categories T36 through T50 with fifth or sixth character of five. Therefore, the second code is T36.0x5a, adverse effect of penicillin's initial encounter. To find this code, you must go to the Table of Drugs and Chemicals in Volume 2 of your ICD-10 book, which starts on page 339 of the Optum 2015 ICD-10 CM Expert for Physicians. From here, look for penicillin, then look across to your right to the column for adverse effect, which gives you a code of T36.0x5. When you confirm this code in the tabular index, you'll notice that a seventh character is required, 
and our table under category T36 indicates that the options for A, the options are A for initial encounter, D for subsequent encounter, or S for sequela. In this particular case, documentation states that the patient developed dermatitis this morning, so a seventh character of A for initial encounter is appropriate. When confirming this code in the tabular, there is an instructional note at the beginning of section T36 through T50, which states code first for adverse effects, the nature of the adverse effect, such as dermatitis due to substances taken internally, category L27. We therefore know that the dermatitis code must go first, even if we had coded the adverse effect first. It is so important to check your answers in the tabular list. For the next example, documentation states atherosclerosis of the right ankle, native artery, with non-healing ulcer with a breakdown of the skin. How would you code this? Please pause the webinar to complete this example and then hit play to continue and learn the answer. The first code is I70.233, atherosclerosis of native arteries of right leg with ulceration of ankle. If you looked up atherosclerosis in the alphabetic index, there is a note which states, see also ar arteriosclerosis, which is necessary because there are no options for the extremities. After finding arteriosclerosis, look for extremities, then leg, which is located almost at the end of all the arteriosclerosis of the extremity codes. You need to pay close attention to make sure you're not still under bypass graft. Indented under leg is the word right, followed by with, then indented below this is ulceration, and then angle, which points to I70.233, which you would then confirm in the tabular list. When you confirm in the tabular, there is a note under subcategory I70.23, which states use additional code to identify severity of ulcer, category L97. Therefore, the second code is L97.311, non-pressure chronic ulcer of right ankle limited to breakdown of skin. If you didn't know we needed to be in category L97, and even if you did, I recommend looking up this code in the alphabetic index. You're going to start an ulcer and then find lower limb. Indented below this is ankle, and then indented below is right. Underneath right is the word with, and then this phrase skin breakdown only, which points to L97.311, which you would then confirm in the tabular. At the beginning of category L97 is a note which states code first any associated underlying condition such as atherosclerosis of the lower extremities. So again, the book is, is guiding us in the code sequence. For the next example, the patient was seen for treatment of cellulitis in the right knee. This was documented as having been caused by Streptococcus B. Patient also has stage one decubitus ulcer of the left buttock and stage two decubitus ulcer in the right gluteal region. How would you code this? Please pause the webinar to complete this example and then hit play to continue and learn the answer. The first code is L03.115, cellulitis of right lower limb. Since documentation states that the patient was seen for treatment of cellulitis, this code goes first as it is the reason for the visit. Unless the guidelines state otherwise, the, we the reason for the visit should be coded first. To locate this code, start at cellulitis in the alphabetic index, then find knee indented below. There is a note next to knee stating C cellulitis lower limb. After finding lower limb, we are directed to code L03.115 with a checkbox next to it indicating more digits are required. When we go to the tabular, we see that subcategory L03.11 is for cellulitis of other parts of limb. So we still need to find the right lower limb, which is L03.115. The next code is B95.1, Streptococcus group B as the cause of diseases classified elsewhere. 
To locate this code, start at infection in the alphabetic index and then find bacterial indented below. From here, find the phrase as cause of disease specified elsewhere, followed by streptococcus, and then group B indented below, which points to B95.1, which you would then confirm in the tabular. The next code is L89.312, pressure ulcer of right buttock, stage two. To locate this code, start at ulcer in the alphabetic index, then find decubitus indented below, where there is an instructional note stating C ulcer pressure by site. After following these directions, find stage two under pressure ulcer, then the site, which is the buttock. Documentation states gluteal region, which equates to buttock. This points to L89.3 with a checkbox next to it indicating more digits are required. When we go to the tabular, we see that subcategory L89.3 is for pressure ulcer of the buttock. We still need to find the right buttock as well as stage two. The subcategory for right buttock is L89.31. Then we need a six character of two to indicate that the ulcer is stage two. This gives us a final code of L89.312. The last code is L89.321, pressure ulcer of left buttock, stage one. To locate this code, start at ulcer in the alphabetic index, then find pressure indented below, and we know from the previous code that decubitus is coded under pressure ulcer. From there, find stage one, and then the site, which is also the buttock. This points to L89.3, with a checkbox next to it indicating more digits are required. When we go to the tabular, we see that subcategory L89.3 is for pressure ulcer of the buttock. We still have to find the left buttock as well as stage one. The subcategory for left buttock is L89.32. Then we need a six character of one to indicate that the ulcer is stage one. This gives us a final code of L89.321. The order for the codes in this scenario is important. Since the reason for the visit was actually to treat the cellulitis, the cellulitis is coded first, followed by the infection code for the condition that caused the cellulitis. Then the remainder of the codes should be sequenced from most to least severe. Therefore, the stage two ulcer would be sequenced before the stage one ulcer. Now it's time for our quiz. Our first question is if a patient is admitted with a pressure ulcer at one stage and it progresses to a higher stage during the admission, what code is assigned? The second question is what is the code for cellulitis on a toe of the left foot? You can pause the webinar to write down your answers and then hit play to find out if you were correct. The answer to our first question is assign a code for the highest stage. The answer to the second question is L03.032, cellulitis of left toe. To locate this code, start at cellulitis in the alphabetic index, then find toe indented below. We are directed to code L03.03 .03 with a checkbox next to it, indicating more digits are required. When we go to the tabular, there are options for right, left, and unspecified toe. L03.032 is for cellulitis of the left toe. Remember, the United States will begin using ICD-10 on October 1st of 2015. After the October 1st compliance date, it will be very important to verify that claims are being received and to check remits for denials based on the ICD-10 conversion. This concludes Chapter 12 of ICD-10-CM, Diseases of the Skin and Subcutaneous Tissue. Please feel free to check out our webinars on all 21 chapters of ICD-10-CM. If you need further assistance with ICD-10 training for physicians and or staff, please visit the VantagePoint website at www.vantagepointconsult.com or call us at 203-288-6860.